was blessed to have another father that raised me. And so God has been good to me. We're here today to celebrate for some Father's Day, for other men's day. For whatever day you want to call it, God has been good to you. We use as a subject on this morning. Manhood under construction. Manhood under construction. And when we be coming out of the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, we use as our text this morning, but we're not going to use all these verses. But we use as our text. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things shall be added. To you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. My brothers and sisters, we're living in a time to where men don't even know they're men no more. I didn't come to talk about that, but we're going to deal on some of that. And our scripture this morning. Men don't know if they're a man or a woman now. Women don't know if they're men or a woman now. We're dealing with a society that I heard somebody tell me on yesterday. Their pastor was preaching on homosexuality. He ought not to be politicizing things. It's not politicizing to preach on that which is wrong. Whether you agree with me or not, the Bible talks about that. We didn't come here to talk about that on this morning, but we just had to mention that. Manhood under construction. You know, in construction, you got demolition. It ain't just building sometimes. Try to tear down something. That's what happens now. We ride on the road, we, don't, we see somebody riding, you can tell whether they're man or woman. Grocery store, now you have to take a devil look. I used to joke with my children. I said, when you start dating, I want to see their grandmama, their granddaddy, and figure out who they is, really, if they was a man or born a man or a woman. Manhood is under construction at all times. We got to state that manhood, uh, man makes babies and that's it. And we call man now baby daddy. We gave him a title. We treat him as such. We let him in when we want him, and we put him out when we don't want him. And then we want to stand by and say, where is all the men at? Society has dictated a different thing now. I said we didn't come to talk about that, but man is under Good is under construction. We're living in a society that seeks to turn down men. This is men, men day, women. <laughs> we have to encourage our men to be under construction and be rebuilt by God and not society, not his own thinking. We don't go on too far to see. What man's thinking has brought us to. We need to understand that no man is perfect. The Bible says it was only one that was perfect. And that is Jesus the Christ. Father Abraham, father of many nations, had issues. In his life. All right. All right. But the greatest issue that he had was his faith in the one true God. Amen. His father and mother believed in idol gods and worshipped idol gods. But for whatever reason, he attained to that one true God, Yahweh. Amen. 
we have to understand that when we look at our fathers and our, our brothers, we have to understand that they got issues just like everybody else. Right. And not just kick it to the side. Whether you believe it or not, you're going to need a man one day. Or you can live without him. You can live without him. You can raise your children without him. You can have a home without him. But there's a benefit to having a man in your life. God made it so. Society has turned our faith structure upside down. To the point where we said, we don't need no man. And the man has got in his head that we don't need no one man. When the Bible said that God created Adam and he was lonely. He put him to sleep and took a rib and created one man, one man, so that he could have a helpmate. And we don't switch that thing upside down and we don't think we need a man. And a man don't think he need a woman. So he go out and he find him another man to be with. And he go out and she go out and find another woman to be with. And then we want to ask, ask the question, what has happened to the world? What has happened to the church? You don't got things twisted and upside down. But we didn't come here to talk about that. <laughs> Somebody else said that he's for little signs and then he's against this and he's against that. No, I'm just with, with God. Amen. 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 Matthew 6, Jesus tells his disciples how to become a man of God according to how the Father had put inside of Christ himself. So these are Christ's words that we are preaching on this morning. It's not something that I have made up on this morning. I have done all the preliminary things that I'm talking about things that's on your mind about homosexuality and those type of things. But uh, really, we need to get back. The church need to get back to what Jesus said. Amen. That's what we're following, right? Amen. I hope y'all ain't following what I said because I think man, I may be wrong, but Jesus is always right. Amen. He tells his disciples, his men. Take heed to that which you do, that you do not own before men, to be seen of them. Likewise, you have no reward of your Father, yes, yes. which is in heaven. So that lets me know that God the Father is always watching. He's watching our interaction with ourselves, our interaction when we, we say we're working for him and we're working for our own selves to be seen. We give money, we give our time and our energy to, to get the pat on our backs, but we're not actually doing it uh, unto the Lord. God the Father, we are actually doing it so that we can feel good. I got any feel good men out there. That's what the problem is. You're doing things that make you feel good. You're not doing things for the Father. I know I ain't going to get no way, man. I know it's a kind of hard. <laughs> but I have to check my own self sometimes. Am I singing for God? Am I preaching for God? Do I raise my children for God? Do I love my wife? For God? Or am I doing it so that other people can see it and say, oh, he's great. Come on. And then he said, therefore, when thou does thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before the tree, before the, as the hypocrites do in the, uh oh, synagogue and in the streets. They may have glory of men. Very, very, I say unto you, they have their reward. Yeah. Doing things. I'm, 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 we, we talk about men under construction. Amen. See, society have already told you down. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We, we have proved, proven that women are more educated than men. Yeah. I know I'm yeah. My wife is smaller than I am. Well, but 
I'm still the man. My wife can make more money than I make, but I'm still the man. Society has made it so because we have been lacking, men have, have been lacking and, and, and going the way of feel good. They make babies over here. Y'all might as well come on and go with me. I'm going to take my time today. They men. They're making babies over here. When over here get a little hot, they go over here and make babies. And the woman is left with the bag to raise the children, to pay the bills. And then here he come call and get out of all your car. So it is proven that a woman can do it, but it was not meant for her to be that way. It was meant for us to do it together. I know I ain't gonna get no disagreement. Some of y'all that some of y'all gonna get cross-eyed. You need to get rid of him. He ain't the right man. I'm gonna tell you what it is, and I'm gonna tell you how it is. Simply because God has given it to me that way. Amen. We got to we got to search ourselves. Amen. There used to be a song, "Search Me, Lord." Amen. Huh? We got to search ourselves to see if we ready to go back to be with Jesus when He comes back. And we're not serving the Father. We're not serving our Lord and our Savior. We're not going to be ready to go back. We're not living the way he said we're supposed to live. Amen. Then we're going to have to endure many stripes. That's what the Bible says. It's going to be clashing of teeth and many stripes are going to be given. Yeah. So we have to be, we have to search ourselves and make sure that we are under the right construction men. Yeah. Or lest we be like Adam. That woman you gave me. Yeah. When you was in charge. And you put the blame on the woman. Yeah. The blame belonged to you. Yeah. God made you in charge. Did he not? If anything is lacking, then it's the responsibility. But I'm just telling you how it is. Yeah. Don't you listen to the word tell you you don't need to do all of that. You do what you got to do to make it, to, to raise your family, to be with your family. If you don't make a mistake and your family is gone, continue to be in your children's life. Some of y'all men looking wrong. They don't want me around, real. Well, you figure it out. You get with God and you let God show you how to be in your children's life. You might not be able to be in your, in your ex life, but you can be in your children's life so that they can see a man under construction. So that your sons and daughters know how to be what they are and what God has called them to be. So they don't switch identities. I know some of y'all gonna say, well, he's egotistical. No, I'm not he's egotistical. I believe God uses whomever he wanted you. Yeah. And I also believe that if I'm not in place, then he don't want to use me. Amen. So we have to get in place. Amen. And then he says, he tells them about their arms and how they're going to be rewarded openly and how, how their mindsets has to be. That their mindsets must be on what he says it has to be. Yeah. And not what we think and feel like it should be. I don't feel like a woman should be able to do this and that. Yeah, come on now. Come on, oh, I don't feel like a man should be uh, over me. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like a man should have all the say so and, and this and that. But what do the scripture actually detail? Do you change the word to fit your circumstance? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So he tells them how to pray, and then he says, he shows them, he shows them how to pray. In his next scripture, he says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the 
synagogue and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. And very, very, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thine closet. See, let me, let, me, let me break this down for you. It's easy to pray in church. Because you got somebody saying amen. Praise right, right, right. him. Amen. But when, when it's just between you and God, see, your fellows ain't here. You remember back in the day when you used to talk with the young ladies and when your buddies was around? Oh, you could talk to her then. But when it was just you and her, everything was quiet. You didn't have nothing to say. That is the relationship that you had to build with the woman. You got to build that same relationship with your father in heaven. You got to build that relationship by talking to him. When ain't nobody else around, when things are going wrong, when things don't even look right, you talk with God the Father and nobody else knows about it. So you don't have to go and find your secret closet as a room, but you can talk to him while you're sitting in here right now and don't nobody know you're talking to him. So you got to have that open relationship with the Father that you can talk to him just like I'm talking to you. You ain't got to make time for him. All the time should be for him. When I'm doing wrong, I say, Lord, help me. Yeah. You know I'm doing wrong. Yeah. I can't help myself. Yeah. When things are going right, I say, thank you, Lord, for the blessing. Yeah. Sometimes my wife says, you say something? No. Yeah. I'm talking to her. I'm talking to the Lord. Yeah. Oftentimes, we hear it out of loved ones. My grandmother, and I used to hear her mother. When I was dating, she'd be in her room just praying. Nobody in there but her and Jesus. My grandmother was the same way. Sometimes she, I come to the house, I can hear her outside, she'd be praying. Well, nobody in the room but, or in the house sometimes, but her and Jesus. And she's praying about all the grandchildren. They're praying about her husband. She's praying about everything in life because she's having a conversation with the one that can do something about it. Our lives as men sometimes turn upside down. We don't know which way to go. Sometimes we choose the wrong rather than the right. As my brother was saying this morning, we choose the wrong rather than the right. The only one that can make it right is to get to talk with our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. He's the only one. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So we got to learn how to call on him. Have a relationship with him. Some of us is worried about when we leave this world. What are we going to go? You better fix it right here, right now, because once you leave, it is too late. I don't worry about whether Jesus knows me or not. He don't want to send me out. I talk to him. I don't just sing about him. Oh, he walks with me. I don't just sing it. I talk to him. We strategize. Sometimes he tells me, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. He tells me through the Holy Spirit, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. I be mean, like, I know, I know. Uh, forgive me. Amen. I get it right. All right. Amen. So sometimes when you hear me talking to myself, yeah, somebody might say I'm sitting in my mind, but I'm talking to Jesus. I don't care about what, you, what you're talking about. I'm trying to do something. You better make that relationship with God. God, you are always under construction. Either someone is bringing you down or God is building you up. Amen. You got to be able to read the blueprint. Yes. You got to be able to hear the foreman. Yes. You got to be able to be on the construction site as, as the Lord is building your life. You got to be able to see it clearly how the building is supposed to be. Oh, we just keep on singing this old building, keep on laying. Yeah. Turn down and build another. Yeah. I'm waiting on the glorified body. Yeah. But I let God turn down every chance he gets. Yeah. Rebuild it. Yeah. 
because they keep on creeping to the wrong way. Amen. This flesh, we war against the flesh. Paul talked about that. And Romans, we war against the flesh. Yeah. But to be calm-minded, to be enemy against God, so we have to understand that the flesh cannot rule our life. That's what you see. And nobody wants you to talk about. They don't want you to talk about the things that are an abomination under God. It is just not homosexuality. A proud look is an abomination under God. Go home and read Proverbs. A lying tongue is a problem. It's an abomination to God. We just hooked and focus on, on the drinking and the smoking and different things that we think is abomination. Not what the word of God says is an abomination. And we doing all He said, go into the closet when you pray. Uh -huh. And then he said, and thy father, which sees in secret, shall reveal open, re reveal the reward to thee openly. Uh -huh. But thy pray, do not use vain repetition. I know that this might not be a father day message for some of y'all. Y'all looking for men and, and y'all looking for the theatrical. But I'm showing you how to be a good dad. I'll show you how to be a good dad, a good mom, a good, a good mother too, a good, a, a good father. I'm showing you how to be a good man. Because Jesus is talking to his disciples, trying to tell them how to be good at what they do. Don't miss this this morning. He said, don't pray in vain repetition. Huh? It says, as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard of much speaking. You know, be not therefore likened unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye need of before you ask. Amen. Amen. After this matter, therefore ye pray. Yes. And we use this as a poem. Mm. The Lord's Prayer. Amen. We often say, it's a Lord's, it's a poem. And we teach our children. I had to learn it as a young boy. I had to learn it as a, as a poem. And had to recite it before the church. Not knowing that it was gold here. Amen. Huh? Amen. Jesus is teaching his men how to pray. All right. I, I'm not getting into your theology of who you think Jesus is or who you think your father is. I'm, I'm not preaching about that this morning. I'm preaching about men, men, men who have been under construction. And Jesus is giving instruction on how to be a good man or woman of God. On this morning, in this prayer that we pray, we say all the time, we say it all the time. I knew it. I knew it. And I knew it. And one time I went home and we had a funeral. And, and the preacher told me, he said, Rev, we're going to the grave site. And we was at the grave site. And he told me he just wanted me to pray. And so I got there. He said, Rev, I want you to do the Lord's Prayer. I knew it from childhood. I knew it back before. Yeah. But at that point in time, yeah. it went away. Yeah. Because I knew it in mind and not in thought. Yeah. I knew it in mind, but I won't live in mind. Yeah. And it went away, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he said, Just pray, sir. Yeah. <laughs> After everything was done, he said, Your mind went blank. And I said, Yeah. <laughs> he said, I saw it. Your face just went blank, you know. <laughs> He said, but I, but I told him, I said, I know it. He said, I know you know it. We all know it. He said, but sometimes the mind is going blank. And so I say that to tell you this, that sometimes our minds go blank as men. Sometimes it takes a woman. They walk by and you see them, you, know, you forget about everything. <laughs> Why he had to say that? I did my wife look. <laughs> You forget about what you were going to the grocery store for. You forget about what was on TV. Y'all quit me, y'all. Y'all do the same thing now. Some good looking men out there. You just have to make sure they men. It might not be a man. I see some manly women out there. But I 
seen some feminine men out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They long hair. Mm -hmm. Then when you get up the side, they got long beards. <laughs> With lipstick on.
and he allowed him to come down and he and he allowed him to sacrifice himself so so that he could show his love to mankind so that mankind can respond in other words and give their life back to him so that we can communicate one on one do you not know that's what he did when he placed his Holy Spirit on the inside of us God is communicating with us we don't forget about it we still walking around Look at what I did. You live long enough. Them shoulders gonna go on down and they're gonna creep. That stomach gonna hang like a wheelbarrow. And you're gonna walk like the pregnant lady with your legs gathered. Many of us wait till we don't got old and, and feeble and wait till we don't can't do it no more. And then we say, Lord, I live for you. You done already live, son. Amen. Now you don't got old and broken up. Now you want to come and live to God. That's nothing wrong with it. It took that long for you to get there. Come on. But we need to recognize that we can come to him whatever age we are. But it's best to come to him when you're young. That way he can keep your body. He can keep your mind patterns going. That way you can you can look like a, 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 a well-being man in your 90s. And, and even when you get 100, I know a man that's 95 years old. And he got out there and he was on his roof fixing stuff. And mama said, you need to come down. You're too old to be up there. He said, I guess you're right, I'm got, I'm got hot, but he climbed down, come on over, sit down in the tree. When you look at him, you don't even know he's not in the 90s. That's because he didn't live the life that some of us live. Some of us, we in our 50s and broke up. Can't even see straight. God is a keeper. Men, shake it loose. Some of y'all, I asked sister, make sure I get your name right. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to call you the sister name, Beverly. Uh, Minister Beverly, open up for her. She kind of looked at me funny, you know. I read it in some mind, you know, this is men day. It don't matter what day it is. You, you're a woman of God. You, you carry the ministry, uh, and you can carry the day as well as any other day. I'm not hung up on this 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 thing where a woman God can't use a woman. God use a donkey to let them know. <laughs> God uses whomever He want to use. When He want to use them, we too hung up on this egotistical thing that a woman can't do this and a man can only do that. We got to cut that down. See, the pandemic doesn't happen now. See, it's some things that we can break down real easy now. <laughs> some people, some men is trying to live back in the Old Testament now. Huh? They, they're trying to live back in the Old Testament. Well, in the Old Testament, the men did it all. Why you got your wife working? The men did it. You want to live back in the Old Testament? Let them stay home. And you continue to do everything. Somebody's going to say, I, I do do everything. When you get home, do you cook? It's your responsibility to take care of your family. She's your helpmate. Somebody don't got mad. Somebody going to start rocking. <laughs> he mailed it now. Now I got to go home and hear this stuff again. <laughs> I ain't telling you something I don't do. If I get home and she don't want to cook, I cook. I ain't got a problem with it. That way I have to fix my pork chop. She ain't gonna fix me none. <laughs> and I eat a fry. <laughs> fix a little gravy on the side. Sometimes I smother and put onion on. She said, you know I don't eat that yet, but I do. <laughs> you didn't want you should cook. Some man gonna get upset with that. It's a woman's job to cook. She's doing everything else. She's your helpmate. I know how I wanted to take it. 
Mama showed because she said, you ain't going to never get married. <laughs> but she got that wrong. I'm a man. When my son was get out, when we were raising my son and my children, and he got out of line, I jerked a knot in him. Same as my father did to me. Got out of line, my wife, he was too big, that put my wife to him. She ain't but four foot nine. My son is almost six foot, 200 and something pounds. She can't handle him. She can't even handle the daughters. They needed a man at the house. When I got out of line, I got him. Teach him how to be a man. That's what's wrong now. Women can do it, and then their daughters go out and they look for another woman. They don't want a man in the house. They already got the car in the house. They already got the education. What do they need a man for? So you need to be a man because we got certain equipment. We equip a certain way. I can raise my daughters. But I'm not equipped the way that I need to be equipped to give them that which they need so they can be young ladies. I need a wife to show them how to be young ladies so they don't try to be a man. I know y'all ain't gonna like that, yet. Roads have changed and got all twisted. And then he says, now that was in the day of bread. He says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive us. See, he's teaching them to let some stuff go. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See, he's teaching them how to talk to the Father yeah. through prayer. Yeah. And in talking to the Father in prayer, it's reciprocating down from the Father to yeah. them, to everybody else. Yeah. So that men can see the glory of God on your, on your life, men. Yeah. So that the ladies can feel confident with who they got. That they can be taken care of. All right. If I don't have a job, there's no problem. All right. The squirrel gonna have a problem in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> he good with gravy too. <laughs> don't have a job? I can go out there and get them fishes. Right. Right. We gonna eat at night yeah. and during the day. If I don't have a job, I know how to raise a crop. Right. If I don't have a job, I know how to go on the side of the streets, up here and down. They got mother bird trees. People don't even know you can eat them. Right. They walking all over them, not knowing that they good. <laughs> if I don't have a job, I know how to make a living without going to the job. Most men don't know how to do that. Yeah. They can't even feed themselves. Amen. <laughs> All right. Come on, man. They know where the ABC store is, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know where the split's at. <laughs> but we don't know how to be a man. All right. Even in the church house. We don't know how to be a man. Amen. Simply because it's foreign to us. Yes. Get with God. Amen. He'll instill something inside of you to make you want to do the work of, of his work about his hand. And he'll place it in you that you'll be good at whatever you do in life. That people can see his glory. That's all this prayer is saying here. 
Then he says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive you of your trespasses. Amen. Moreover, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do, and have a sad, sad face of countenance um, that you may appear to fast. Uh, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Don't do things just to be seen. I don't tell my wife I love her as much as I should because I show it to her. I ain't got to look at her. I already know. She in need for something. I make sure that it's there. She's sick and can't do things. I make sure it get done. I don't say it as much as I should, but I try to show. See, some of y'all got it twisted. Y'all say it all the time, but you don't never show. If somebody was to break into the house, she ain't got to worry about it. She sitting right up there. First little noise, I'm in that room. What's going on? Who I need to get up out of here? One of us gonna go. Because I'm a man. You are a man. Men. You got to get a grip. I want all the men stand. All y'all men stand up. You too, bro. I know you got to All y'all men stand up. You are a man. You are a man. You are a man. You need to hear that. Young boys, they got young boys in here, they need to stand up. You are a man. You are made different. Your mentality has to be different. You have to be able to take the lead and take it whether it's good or bad because you are a man and you are in construction. God ain't never do with you until you leave this world. You are a man. I know you don't want to hear you ain't heard that in a while. You are a man. You've been hearing the thing that you're a man child, so you've been acting like a kid. You are a man. For God created man out of the dust of the world, of the earth. You are a man. That's why I ask you to stay. Stay up and be a man. Yeah. Under God's construction. Yeah. As we read this last scripture, I want you to repeat it. Verse 33. All y'all mean. Repeat it. But seek ye first. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And all and, and his righteousness. And his righteousness. Come on, say it like a man. Not the woman righteousness, not the church righteousness, but the righteousness of God. Not your righteousness, but the righteousness of God. And all, and all, everything you got, everything you need, say so all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Now I want all y'all men to look at some woman in here. I want you to look at him. <laughs> see, 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 it's a purpose to this. She's your help, baby, right? I know y'all three sitting there, y'all ain't got no hoods there. Uh, but look at each other. That's all right. Y'all two sisters, y'all sisters, all of us, we all family. Now, me and I want you to say this to, to the woman. Because she got to help you do this, and she got to do this. But seek ye first. But seek ye first. Huh? Come on, say it like a man. You got to say it like a man now. Get the ten out of your voice. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. 
See, 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 you got to say it like you mean it because if she don't seek you first, seek the kingdom of God, she going to seek to set up her own kingdom. And it's going to be excluding you. Because society says you ain't no good. So you got to say it like a man. Come on, rabbit. Say it like a man. <laughs> but seek ye first. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Come on, say it like you're in the house on fuss. <laughs> Come on now. But seek ye first. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now this this is the promise that Jesus is making to his disciples now. It says, and all in, in his righteousness. In his righteousness. Come on, you got to look at the woman. Don't look at me. <laughs> and his righteousness. And his righteousness. I was saying a little weak. Y'all don't even know what the righteousness is. <laughs> and his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all things. All these things. All, all these things. things. Huh? Shall be added. Shall be added. Shall be added unto you. That's right. That's right. You can take your seat. Now, when you go home, you can tell you if you call this girl, you know, my husband stood up in church and said some stuff. This is a promise from Jesus. The Christ to his yeah. disciples, letting them know that if you do it the way I said do it, yeah. everything's going to be added unto you. Yeah. 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 Jesus gave his life for the both of us, uh -huh. men and women. stuck him in the side uh -huh. and said blood run down yeah. when that blood hit the ground I heard one saying say, when the blood hit the ground that was that was that was salvation into the whole world right. we got to be strong in the Lord as church folks yeah. as God's folks yeah. under construction yeah. of his will and he will provide everything that we need in this life. So men, I hope you felt encouraged. You told us something today. I heard you. You let her hear a mouthful today. And you don't never get to say nothing else. You told her today. Brother, I'm sorry, your wife won't hear. When you get home, read her, tell her, tell her what I said, brother. Manhood, manhood under construction. Amen. Was the title. I know I said a lot. I didn't preach to you like I wanted to preach to you, but I wanted to minister to you so you'll understand. Manhood is important. Yeah. And it's more than what we see and what society has taught yeah. us. Right. God is giving us instruction in his kingdom. Yeah. On how to treat and love and, and help one another. Yeah. The yeah. world is giving us instruction on how to divide the yeah. kingdom of God, yeah. the church. Of. Mm -hmm. We must strive to keep God's house intact. Yeah. Oh. I'm not talking about Olive Grove, I'm talking about your house, All right. All right. All right. your earthly vessel. You must strive to keep yeah. it intact. Yeah. Some of y'all don't have men in your life or at your house, but God has somebody to help you. Yeah. He'll give you the means to survive in life and have that which you need. The Father of all nations. Yeah. And I'm going to end it. Abraham. Sarah gave him her covenant. And he married. They had
had a son by the name of Ishmael. Uh -huh. But that wasn't what God told him to do. Amen. In the word of God, it says that Abraham had to push his, push, put his wife out because they was arguing and fussing. Uh -huh. And Ishmael's mother felt like her son is supposed to have the inheritance. Right. Well, we know Isaac got all of Abraham's inheritance. Yeah. So Abraham put his baby mama out. And they weren't over there now. But God made a promise to him and his mama in the desert that they would be that he would become a great man. A leader, yes. and then they would be taken care of. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Even though baby daddy don't put him out, All right. he still saw God saw and saw that they'll leave. Then they tell me his Maria was a little crazy, <laughs> <laughs> but he had some issues because daddy put him out of the house and wouldn't take care of him and his mom. He had those issues, and many of us have those issues Amen. because some men in our life have crushed our Zeke, our, our dreams, and, and, and has left us. And Mama had to raise us, Amen. and she did the best she could. So don't allow your issues to forsake that which God has for you in your future, because God can meet you wherever you are, whoever you are. And whoever your mama, your daddy was, or you, yeah. God can meet you where you are, and He can be a blessing on you because you are under construction too. Right. Womanhood is under construction too. Amen. Just like fatherhood is under construction, or manhood is under construction. Right. You are under construction too. So we thank God for you coming out tonight, this evening, and we hope. We say something, we say it much, but we hope we say something to help you out in this on this Father's Day. Yeah. Take your dad out, go find him. <laughs> Some of our fathers is at three, y'all. Yeah. Mine is there. And I got one in Franklin, North Carolina that raised me. So I had a double blessing. Yeah. But my earthly father is in the grave. And I visited him yesterday. Amen. Let us not remember, let us not forget that without that earthly father, regardless of what they did or how it was in your life, yes. if they have gone on, let us not forget that we wouldn't be if they hadn't done what they done. Amen. Amen. We wouldn't be here. Amen. So let us not forget our fathers. Amen. Let us place them in a place of prominence. I don't care if they was the baddest daddy in the world. Amen. If he hadn't got with mama, you would not be here. Amen. So let us place them in the place of prominence and let us remember the good things and not always the bad things of our fathers. Because we all got them stories. But let us remember the good things of our fathers that have gone on and we give them honor today because uh -huh. yeah. we are here yeah. in the land of the living. Yeah. So we're going to have another selection by our praise team and after which we're going to ask our very own I know Deacon Randolph is looking around but we're going to ask our very own Deacon Randolph to come up and to pray over our sick and our shed in and then we're going to release you.